not too long ago, I started learning um, Rachmaninoff's Prelude in C sharp minor, which might not mean much to many of you. If you've ever watched um, all the way through all the episodes of Lost, <laughs> um, Ben plays the beginning of this in, I think it's the last season. I should find out which episode. Um, anyway, it's a really dramatic piece and I posted about it because it was the first time I'd come across seeing uh, double staves, uh, which is shown right here, which is two treble clef staves and two, two um, bass clef staves for only two hands. Um, so it's quite a hefty piece and I've been working through sections of it. It's I'm enjoying the sound of it a lot because I love all the minor keys, uh, pieces in minor keys, that's my thing. And I thought it would be useful to document the kind of practice that I'm doing, because I think behind closed doors, when people practice the piano, um, it's unique to each person, but on the outside, it looks like you just, you just do practice and then it gets better and suddenly it's amazing. But I thought it would be useful to show you the stages and also the frustrations involved, <laughs> because there is always frustration involved in practicing an instrument no matter how experienced you are. So the bit I'm going to show you is just a short section from the second page. Um, and it's nowhere near as fast as it's going to be in the end. So this section is um, uh, uh, labeled agitato, which is pretty fast indeed. <laughs> but um, I've got a series of clips following and it talks through what's happening in each clip. So in the first clip, uh, I'm just refreshing the notes in my right hand only, as slowly and just working out the notes, which is uh, for this short section is a series of triplets, which is three notes fitting into the time of one beat. That's not really totally important for what we're looking at today, uh, which is the, the way you build it up from um, sort of basic to, to being able to see progress. So here's the clip of me refreshing the notes for my right hand. Okay, so nothing too tricky there. Now, the way the music is written is you've got uh, the first of each of those triplets is actually a crotchet, um, which means you, you have a top line melody of four notes, which is... And those melody notes need to sing out above the rest of the triplet. So here's a clip of me bringing out those top notes by giving a little extra pressure to that um, either finger four or finger five, whichever one's playing each one. Okay, so that sounds a little bit more interesting and you can hear the melody line flowing through. So now the next clip is just, obviously uh, continuing to practice between all to, all, each of these, um, is getting a little bit more uh, t speed into this short section. So this one's a little bit quicker in the right hand. established, I've got the left hand, which um, I'm bringing in, and I've gone back down to a slower tempo because I wouldn't be able to keep up straight away. <clears throat> so what I'm aiming for in this next bit is left hand playing with right hand, left hand not overpowering the melody in the right hand and still bringing those top notes out in the right hand. of the same short section with hands together 
and looking out for any weak points, any bits that don't quite work each time, or it might be a random one that, that doesn't work, but, but listening out for what's working and what's not, and you, then you pinpoint that. in that last clip which you hopefully heard was the chord um where are we this chord was splitting and i don't want it to split so in the next clip i've honed in on that particular section um just to fix that little bit which i don't want to split when i'm playing it all hands together point has been fixed for now <laughs> so the very next clip is a demonstration of random mistakes that can just pop out of nowhere and um, the frustrated sigh that anyone who's learning to play an instrument or practicing a piece or, or whatever you're doing um, <laughs> uh, everyone will experience the frustration um, so I thought I'd show you that one here. to remember from that last clip is that although it can be frustrating to persevere because it will always get better you will always make progress even though progress is not linear so however um, defeated you might feel in some of your practice sessions obviously take a break if it's it's getting too much but keep going because it will always get better so have a break come back to it come back to it the next day or the next week if you need a bit of a longer break uh, it's definitely worth it because then the feeling of success you get when you overcome that hurdle is brilliant. That's that's what we're aiming for. So uh, in the very next clip, this is the last one. This is where I've got to in my practice session today, which is overall hands together for this short section, just getting a little bit better and a little bit more secure. That split chord kind of sneaks back in in the first re in the first version of the repeat. But it's something that I've highlighted as a, an area of weakness that I'll carry on practicing. talking you through the way I've practiced that little section in the Rachmaninoff prelude in C-sharp minor today. Um, the, the, uh, I think the most important thing to look out for when you're practicing is small wins. So progress in any form is still progress and that's still very valuable. So if you sit down expecting to master, I don't know, even a half a page section in one session, it can be um, disheartening if that doesn't come true. It may do on some simpler pieces, but I think it's very important to recognise success and um, appreciate your efforts <laughs> when you do the practice, because it's all worth it in the end. Okay, see you later. <laughs>